Today I'm going to show you how to make your first beat inside of FL Studio. Let's go. To start off, I just want to run you over like the interface of the software and everything. So up here is all the sections. We have the playlist is the first one. And we have the piano roll. We have the channel rack. This is basically your list of sounds. And then we have the mixer. And this is where you can tweak any of the individual sounds by adding effects, lowering the volume. If you don't know what any of that means, I'm gonna break it down for you. So just bear with me. All the way on the left-hand side here is the browser. This is where all your sounds are gonna be. So if you have a folder on your computer that has drum sounds or one shots or anything like that, you can literally just click from your folder drag it into this browser section of FL Studio and it'll automatically add it. Speaking of drum kits, I'm including a free drum kit in the description of this video. So if you want that, just click the first link. And I'm gonna obviously be using it throughout this video, but also give you guys a preview of the sounds real quick. completely free so you might as well download it add it to your arsenal now that that's out of the way we're going to set up our project for our first beat so we're just going to want to pick a tempo to start out at i'm going to go with 138 it doesn't really matter but sometimes like specific genres mainly use general tempo so use that to uh, guide your decision making in that process now, another thing i want to say before we actually start adding sounds in here and making a beat is Whenever we drag a sound from the browser into the channel rack to add it, try to add them in a specific order here. So let's say I'm adding in all my drum sounds. These two are drum sounds. And then let's say a one shot, which would just be like piano sound or guitar sound. I can drag that on. I'd wanna have all my drum sounds together. So like on the bottom and then all my melody sounds together like on the top, for example. Staying organized like that helps you know where everything is, and especially starting out, it's helpful to not get lost where you are in making a, making a beat. First thing we're gonna do to actually make the beat itself is build a melody. So in order to do that, we're gonna wanna find sounds, drag them into the channel rack, and then we can create the melody out here in the piano roll. I'm gonna use a one-shot kit. This is a free one-shot kit from Rio Leva. I'll link his video down below too if you guys wanna get this one-shot kit. This is another free one, so no point in not grabbing it. But I'm just gonna use sounds from here and I'll drag them into the channel rack and then I will start putting a melody together in the piano roll. So let's go with... Okay. I'm gonna start out with this sound and then you can right click on the sound that you wanna use and then check the piano roll and that'll just take you to the piano roll here and you can start basically clicking the notes in to design a melody. So this is like a keyboard here. These are all the notes. This is the timeline. So one beat, two beat, three beat, four beat. This would be a four bar loop. And then these are all the notes here. So we can basically make a four bar loop, uh, an eight bar loop, a 16 bar loop, whatever we wanna do, we can do that. But we'll draw out the notes here inside of the piano roll. Just starting out, we can do a chord progression and then make counter melodies around the chord progression. If you don't know chords, you come up here and click these three lines up here and then we can choose any um, chord. So let's go with a minor chord just to start out. We can click any note and that's automatically gonna make a minor chord off of that note. So let's say we do this to start out. This is a C sharp minor chord because C sharp is the note on the bottom. So then we can click this arrow and go to view, scale highlighting, and then highlight C sharp minor. And that is gonna highlight all these notes here that we are allowed to use. So every note that's highlighted in the background, we're allowed to use. And if it's dark, we're not allowed to use it. So now we can use any of these highlighted notes to make another chord and add counter melodies. Any of these highlighted notes we can click on. So I can do this. There's no rhyme or reason to what I just did. I'm just gonna show you how it sounds. It's 
So it's not terrible, but there's a lot going on. And that's because these notes are all overlapping and they don't end. If I shorten this note to where this note will end when this note starts playing, this note will end when this note starts playing, then it helps create more of a rhythm to the melody as well. And I can even extend this note and just do whatever kind of ideas I'm having here. There's not really any rules, just experiment, see what sounds good to you. Whenever you find something that you like, then uh, keep that and run with it. So I just changed this note. It's still highlighted, so I know I'm allowed to use it. I brought this note down as well, highlighted, so I know I'm allowed to use it. And then when everything's selected, I press Control B, and that duplicates it over. So right now I have four bars. If I select everything and press Control B, it's going to be eight bars because it just duplicates it over. So that's a good kind of basic melody here. And then one thing that's important about creating melodies is layering and counter melodies. So I basically want to add another sound and play similar notes as was on here. Just play that with another sound to kind of layer the two together. So I'll click this sound. And I'm just going to follow these root notes here. You can see how they're highlighted. Those are the same notes that I used in the other pattern. So I can just go over them. And that was that control B to duplicate that over. So listen to that. This is just the sound we did originally by itself. And then this is with layering it with another sound. So now what we're going to do on top of this is just add another sound and do like a counter melody, which is going to be another melody that stays within the highlighted no Let me turn that off. That stays within the highlighted notes, except it doesn't necessarily follow the same pattern as this. That way we can add some variety throughout the beat. Just finding another sound in my browser, and then I can right click the sound, bring it to the piano roll, and I'm going to make a different melody here. The only rule is to kind of stay on these highlighted notes so that I'm in key. So I just painted out that pattern staying on the highlighted notes and then press control B to make it eight bars instead of four. And that's pretty much all we're going to do for this melody here. We're just going to keep it simple. But now we're going to add drums on top of this. And I'm not using either of these two sounds. So I'm going to take those out. And then I'm going to go to the drum kit that I have linked in the description here. And I'm just going to find some drum sounds to add on top of this. I'm going to start out with just probably a clap. And you can see how it's kind of looping when I play it. That's because when we click on the sound here, it has loop points on. All we want to do is click on that sound, turn off the loop points, and then when we play it, it's just going to play once. So for a clap, it's generally just a normal pattern where it hits on the three of every single one. So if I turn the metronome on, it'll go one, two, three, and the clap will hit on three. So. But if we want to add some more variation to a clap, there's a couple different patterns we can do. We could do something like this. Or we could do something like this. I'm actually going to keep that pattern here. And then I'm just going to select these four bars at the top, I right click and dragging, and then press control B and that's just going to duplicate it over. Same thing we've been doing this whole time. And now I'm going to find a hi-hat sound and I'll just drag that into the channel rack as well. Again, adding it to the bottom so I can keep the drum sound separate from the melody sounds. For the hi-hat patterns, we can right click on this and do a two step. So this will fill each two step. So every single other one on the channel rack here is going to be filled and this is what that will sound like. So now what we can do here is we have this two-step pattern. There's two different ways we can adjust this. We can change it in the channel rack here by clicking on these to add different steps and fill them in. Another way that we can do it is we can actually bring it to the piano roll by right-clicking on it and then clicking piano roll. And then we can change these notes here, drag them around, click to add in different ones. And we can do pitched notes so we can do a higher note on the hi-hat or we can do a lower note on the hi-hat. 
So I'm just going to add some lower pitched hi-hats to complement these ones that I have up here. And then I'm going to duplicate these first two bars so that I have the same rolls in the other sections. But yeah, now we have our melody. We have some simple drums on it. Now we're going to add a 808 and a kick. So I'm going to go with this one. And so one important thing with the 808s is that you just want to follow the root notes here. So whatever the bottom note is out of your chord progression, you just want to take that and follow it. So I can see it's C sharp here, and then it goes down to B, and then back up to C sharp, and then back down to B. So I didn't mean to click that one, but see I'm staying on this same note, but I can add them in different places to keep going with the rhythm. click on this sound and check cut itself so that means when the next one plays the first one's going to end so that's what this sounds like instead of them kind of overlapping so i'll drag kick on and i'm just going to select the 808 pattern i'm going to copy it by pressing ctrl c and then paste it over the kick by pressing ctrl v have a decent melody and drum pattern going on right now it's not it's not mixed very well so we can select all of our sounds here in the channel rack by clicking and dragging over all of them and then pressing ctrl l and that's just going to send every single one of these sounds to a mixer track so you see how these all have numbers now the first thing we're going to do here is level these tracks out so the melody is a little bit too loud i'm just going to turn all these individual tracks down starting with the first one i can bring the drums in on top of that and we'll level them out Basically, the only thing we're doing right now is changing the volumes. And we want the 808 and the clap to hit at about the same spot. The hi-hat hitting just below them. So you see how I'm just changing this and whatever sounds best. That's what I'm sticking with. And then I'm going to turn the kick on. And we want the kick to be this, the loudest thing in the beat, so we'll make it a little bit louder. And then I'm just going to turn this knob all the way to the right to make it all, only playing in mono. Instead of playing out both ears, it's playing straight down the middle. And we can see how much better it sounds already. So now we're going to enhance the melody by adding different effects on top of them. So the first thing I would go through and do is just basic processing, which would be like equalization and reverb. Select your channel and then click on one of the empty effects, and then you can click on whatever effect you want to add. So the effect I'm adding first is going to be Fruity Parametric, or fr fruity parametric EQ2. And basically, I want to cut out some of the low end here, everything hitting at bass and below. That way I can give more rooms for the bass of the actual drums to be hitting. So I'll just click and drag this down to take out some of this low end here. And now I can add some other effects if I want to change the sound of that. A good example would be like Fruity Chorus is free. It comes with the software. This would be an example of what that would sound like. And they have all these different presets. I actually like this, so I'm going to keep this one. And after adding effects, it might change the volume a little bit. So you might need to make things a little bit louder or quieter after you add effects to them. Now I'll turn the counter melody on. And now there's definitely some effects we can use to enhance this. We want to add reverb first. It's like an echo. And then I'm going to add delay. And so now I'm just making this a little bit quieter so it sits well with the rest of the melody. And then it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to turn the drums back on here, but we know they're already level. And now we have something that actually is starting to sound like a beat. And then from here, we have everything leveled. The only thing we need to do is go over to our master track and make sure it's not hitting too high. So if I turn everything off that I have on right now, you can see it's hitting almost all the way at the top. We don't want it to be that high. So we can add a clipper. You can use Fruity Soft Clipper. And if you turn it on, we can see we just turn down this post knob. Turn it, we want it to hit around three so we can 
clip it down to three and it's going to be playing at basically the same volume it's just going to get clipped down to three and so now we have all of our sounds together they're all mixed they're all sounding good pretty much the only thing we have left is to arrange the beat so if we go over here to the playlist the first section we introduced you can see our pattern one up here if we right click it and then split by channel it's going to split all of our sounds up into individual tracks and then we just drag them onto the playlist and we lay them out in the order that we want to lay them out. Now the only really thing to say about arrangement is to just have clearly defined sections. So you want to have an intro and then a chorus and a verse and you can pretty much arrange the chorus and the verse in whichever order you want to do, whatever repetition you want to do. But some of the most popular arrangements would be like an intro and then a chorus and then a verse and then back to the chorus and then back to a verse and then an outro. So that's how we're gonna arrange this one here. So just to keep it really simple, we'll have these two sounds playing throughout the verse. And then we'll have these two sounds playing throughout the, the chorus. And so now we have all these. This is our current layout, but if we wanna spice it up a little bit more, we can take out the first one of this, the first one of this, just to make it a little bit more variety and then we could even take out the second one of this and the second one of this just so we have a little bit more switch ups so that's what this sounds like from here it's pretty much just preference of whatever you're hearing you can add to make every section interesting and keep it going all the way throughout you just want to make sure you don't have too many things happening all at once because it will make it a little bit harder for an artist to get on the beat but that kind of comes along with practice don't even be thinking about that on your first beat it doesn't matter one thing we can do to spice up the arrangement a little bit more is add transitions between each section so if we do something as simple as say a little riser before we drop into the chorus every time that's just going to add a lot to the track let's use this one and we'll just drag it and we'll make it hit right leading up to the chorus turn it down just a little bit and how much it adds to the actual transition of that section but yeah that's pretty much all for the video to recap we first went over the every section of fl studio we went over the playlist we went over the piano roll the channel rack the mixer and the sound browser and we showed you how to set up the project by picking a tempo we showed you how to be organized with your sounds within the channel rack and we showed you how to build a melody showed you how to build drums and add effects to the melodies in order to enhance them, arrange the beats, transition between different sections, and then mix and master it. And that is pretty much all. Again, if you guys want the free drum kit, it's going to be the first link in the description. That pretty much concludes the video. I will see you guys in the next one.